If you're struggling in real estate, you're probably falling victim to one or multiple of these seven detrimental mistakes. So what I want to do in this video is break down the top seven mistakes I see agents constantly making, which ultimately leads to why they end up struggling. And unfortunately, in many cases, ends up leading to the 87% that end up failing and leaving the industry. So without further ado, let's dive deep into the seven mistakes, but also how to solve each one of them. What's up guys, it's Mike Sherrod. Welcome back to my channel. If you do want to support me, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. It means the world to me. But what I want to do today is talk about the things that a lot of people struggle with, because let's face it, real estate is not an easy industry. A lot of people come in thinking it's just going to be a walk in the park, listing all these crazy million dollar listings. And that's simply not the case. And especially this year with all of the craziness that's been going on, there are a lot of people struggling. So let's dive into some of the things that people constantly struggle with. The first thing, and one of the most important things, is schedule. There's so many people that don't have a properly optimized schedule. I do have a video if you want to click above about my schedule that I use in order to do six figures in my first year as a brand new agent. But having a properly dialed in schedule is going to be one of the most important things primarily for the reason that we're self-employed. So the problem with a lot of agents is that they come from an employment world where you're held accountable, where you have a boss. If you don't get certain things done on a daily basis, then you get in trouble for that. But with real estate, there's nobody holding you accountable other than yourself. And if you don't prospect on any given day, nothing happens. If you don't create that marketing plan or work on your branding, nothing really happens. If you don't get those CMAs done for those listings and you lose a listing, well, that's your fault that you didn't prioritize it. So having a properly dialed in schedule down to the hour is something that's going to be extremely important, but more importantly is making sure that you actually follow it and execute it. You can see here, I've got a to-do list on a daily basis that I have my checklist, my power list, which are the top five income producing needle moving activities that I have to do on a daily basis. And I cross it out with this high letter right here. So as an agent, you need to make sure you've got an optimized dialed in schedule doing the things you need to do, not just the things that you want to do. Now, number two is not having properly optimized systems and processes in place. I've got a couple of examples here that I want to talk about. Number one, following up with online leads. A lot of people will make one touch point and then set it and forget it. But oftentimes you'll talk to an ISA that will tell you leads usually convert after the seven touch points. So if you don't have a system in place for following up and nurturing online leads, you're not going to get much business from it. Additionally, nurturing clients, having a process in place that when a client comes in, what is your experience? What is your process? Having a templated process to follow that you can execute at scale because a lot of agents start to build a bit of momentum, but as soon as they get a large volume of clients, they want to run around like the chicken with their head cut off because they don't have the systems in place to actually scale their business. And when they actually start getting a lot of clients come to them, they can't even service them properly like they otherwise did with their few clients in the beginning. Now also listings and sales. You want to make sure that you've got processes in place for when the deal closes, how you're nurturing the clients, what you're giving them on possession day, how you're staying in touch with them on holidays, birthdays, special occasions, things like that. You need systems and processes for everything. It's really easy in real estate to build a six figure business just by putting in exhaustive hours and bootstrapping your way there. But to take it from 100,000 to two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars per year, the only way that you're going to do that without losing your sanity is by having systems and processes mapped out, laid out that you can execute on efficiently every single time. Now, number three, is not investing into your business. I see so many agents that start to close a couple deals and then they go on vacation or they start to close a couple deals and they buy a new car or a new purse or a new suit or things like that. They're not reinvesting into their business. One of the biggest things that allowed me to scale as a new agent was taking about 30% of my income and reinvesting it back into marketing. So if you want to see my exact marketing strategy that I used on social media in order to scale to multiple six figures in my first year, 
comment below and I'll send you my free masterclass that I just actually overhauled to provide more value to you. So that should be a resource to show you how you should properly be reinvesting back into your business to scale it. I still to this day only pay myself enough to cover my living expenses and reinvest almost 100% of my income back to growing my business because I know that over time it's going to pay itself off in dividends. So make sure you're allocating at least 30% of your income back to your business to help it scale. Now, number four, this is a really interesting one. A lot of people can't even tell you what makes them unique. And I see this in listing presentations all the time. When you ask an agent what makes them different or what makes them special, they're always going to tell you, well, I love people so much and I just love to work with people and I just like making such a difference in people's lives. But what makes you different? Because every agent says that. So if you go up against somebody in a listing presentation and the sellers say, well, what makes you different? What are you going to do differently? And you just say, well, you know, I just love working with people so much and it's going to be the best experience experience ever, but the seven people that went to that listing presentation before you said the same thing. How are you actually going to stand out? You need to know what your unique approach is, whether it be an extremely unique experience start to finish, a concierge type service, whether it be marketing, whether it be branding, whether it be exposure, you need to be able to communicate clearly and define what makes you different than any other agent in your market. And if you can't tell yourself right now that if you went up against the top agent in your market, and a seller asks you versus them what you're going to do differently or what makes you different than them and why they should work with you versus the top producer in your entire market, you need to get back to the drawing board. Number five, not prioritizing activities. And what I mean by this is again, going back to the schedule, agents fall victim very frequently to doing the things that they want to do and doing the things they enjoy doing, but not doing the things that they have to. So many agents would rather go on six hours of one hour coffee meetings with other agents or mortgage brokers or lenders in their city than actually prospect or do lead generation. So many agents would rather spend hours on Canva designing a thumbnail or some new flyer when they could have outsourced it to Fiverr or a marketing agency and put that time back into growing their actual business. You need to get in the habit of doing the things that you don't really love to do, but are the things that actually move the needle in your business and help you scale. Now, number six is committing to the process. So many people are gonna start trying new things and then if it doesn't work out within one or two months, they quit. And then they're going to start, you know, they start on Facebook lead generation and maybe it doesn't work out as they're expecting. So they move on to YouTube ads and then YouTube ads maybe don't generate as much business as they're expecting. So they try LinkedIn and then LinkedIn doesn't work. So they try something over here and then they try flyers and then they try this. You need to understand that you can run your real estate business however you want to run it and be wildly successful. But in order to do that, you need to make sure that you're consistently committing to the process, knowing that if you execute consistently on the right things every single day, no matter what path you head down, you will find success in your real estate business. So make sure that you start to commit to the process. And number seven, seventh and finally, is not thinking long-term with the plan. I constantly see agents and the furthest they can think is either the next deal or the next year. They don't have a plan in place to scale their business. And the problem with that is, you start meeting agents that say, well, I've been in the business for 20 years. The problem with that is that they've actually been reliving the first year, 20 years over. They haven't progressed. They haven't innovated. They haven't pivoted. They haven't enhanced their business to the point where it's actually 20 years worth of growth. And if your business isn't growing year after year, you've got a problem. So make sure that you're mapping out a five-year plan that's achievable, that's ambitious, but actually is something that you can follow along with. And if you're only focusing on the next transaction, you're constantly going to be in the rat race and it's going to be really taxing on your mind, on your emotions, on your body, on your relationships, on everything. So having a long-term plan on something that you can follow through with is going to make a world of a difference for your business. And if you feel like you're struggling right now in 2020, you need to put pen to paper, write out a word document, do whatever you need to, to get your schedule in check, to have your marketing plan dialed in, understand your brand, what makes you unique, making sure that you've got your systems and processes dialed in to the point where anybody could follow it. If you bring an agent onto your team, they can follow it start to finish with no questions left unanswered, as well as having that execution 
execution plan that of course can pivot over time, but at least you know where you want to go, how you're going to get there and the actionable steps that you can take in order to scale year over year. So I'd love to know if there's anything that you feel like you're struggling with, or if you see common things that others in the industry aren't really having their luck with, even though they're giving it their best shot. So hopefully you resonate with this. Hopefully you take some of the things that I said in order to implement it, to make a difference leading into the rest of this year and heading into 2021. So as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time.